People you who are using uh, uh, Windows laptop, please use the please register an account at nitrous.io. Uh, have you all done that? After that, take Node.js, select any region, then create house. able to see the screen okay. it's only for you for using windows okay uh, now type in the command in the console Parts install media. That you can follow the same thing. Meteor create the world. Are you able to do this? Then open another console and type in medium only. Before that, you need to start media, so just type in media command.
Yeah, no, 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 the website nitus.io, what do we need to do? Uh, so if you don't have a Ubuntu or a meter is not supported in Windows right now. So if you are having a Windows laptop, uh, you have to code using Nitus. So it's it's like online ID. Not Yeah. So let's get started. Uh, I think Windows users will have some friction, but uh, you know, we can't do anything about it because Meteor is not officially supported supported in Windows yet. So please, uh, you know, if you have if someone is using Mac, you can <laughs> work with them or Ubuntu. Uh, so we'll be developing a full fledged app. So you can just visit the demo. It's teamsync.media.com. So we'll be creating a collaboration tool. And click on join team and press uh, as me. Send a request. So it's a small tool where you can update your status, add missions, then uh, chat with your teammates. So basically this is what we are going to build uh, in this version. Oh. 
So enter button doesn't work, you have to click send to. Come to dashboard and see if you see this. having the media mongo running okay so in this workshop uh, we will be starting with uh, mongo uh, queries so we will be getting familiar with how to work with uh, sim simple insert create update delete commands and then we'll be moving on uh, by creating a small template actually we'll be cloning a repository which will just have static html uh, after that we'll be uh, adding backend data to it we'll be wiring up and finally deploying our app so Little more in detail, what you will be doing. Uh, so, we will be working with collections. Collections are nothing but like tables in MySQL databases. Uh, uh, routing, like how to route pages to web pages. Then, uh, publishing relevant data out. Uh, then, sessions, accounts, uh, then permissions, etc. So, we will be, I won't be uh, going through uh, theoretical aspects of it. You will be learning it while you are building it. Yeah, that's what, uh, that's what we are going to do. It. So introduction to Meteor, uh, we have seen apps, uh, when you create apps before Meteor it was like you need to uh, write the schema which is a little difficult part. Then after that uh, we have to write APIs for that, we write server side APIs. Then uh, we need to take care of security also and finally we will be connecting that wires to the uh, front end. And this was a huge amount of effort and many platforms tried to solve it up, many frameworks came work and Try, try to solve this problem, uh, but they took uh, two or three part of it like client side or some took server side. That's where Meteor came in and they said that we are going to handle everything and you will have only one language, JavaScript. So it's JavaScript both in the front end and in the back end. So this is how Meteor works, it's, uh, for, uh, it's, it's, top, it's built on top of Node.js. It sits between uh, database and your client. So what it does is that it checks if there is any changes in the database. And if there are any changes in the database, it pushes it to the client. It pushes it to the interface. So uh, that's how it works. People might ask if, uh, if media is uh, polling the database in a very frequent basis. Is, is it scalable? Uh, that's a question many, many of them ask. So what happens is that in, data, in MongoDB you have something known as operation logs. So with that what happens is that database itself tells the meteor that this is what is changed. So the meteor doesn't have to poll every time uh, in the database. So meteor uh, comes up with packages. So if you see meteor list, if you type in meteor list you can see all the packages which uh, you have added. So media, media has two kind of packages, core packages and atmosphere packages. Core packages is something which comes up with media itself, uh, which you can strip down to your requirements. And atmosphere packages is like packages which is contributed like users like me and you. Uh, 
So even you can create your packages, go to atmo- atmosphere, uh, js.com, something like that. You can see all the packages uh, which meet his purpose. So we'll start up with uh, writing queries on Mongo. I hope everyone is having this clean up. So this is a basically insert command. So we don't uh, define our collections and all. We directly insert it. We don't specify schema and all, so it's uh, basically what it does is it basically adds name uh, the string learn web development web development in the collection known as machines to check if it's added. You can type in the command db dot machines dot find. So we'll add another collection known as stars. So we are inserting these uh, tasks into collections, task collection. So if you type in db.tasks.find, it will give you the list of Now to update this uh, collection. So you can see that. So I added a field known as completed or uh, false. But what it did was that it updated only one uh, one of the collection. Uh, so to add multi to update all the collections, you can just add one more field. Uh, multi. So everything is updated. Now uh, to 
find only relevant fields, like if you want specific fields to be shown. For example, if you want only name field to come. Oh, sorry, db dot. So now only name is only name field is or the completed field is not Now to remove a collection, it's as simple. So it's Anyone have any uh, questions? I mean, you should be initial Playing with more, we are not modifying anything in, in the app, right? Hello world app. So, Meteor comes with this version of Mongo for your app. So, we are we, we are actually modifying the. We are not modifying anything in the Team Sync app, but in your local host, we are modifying. It is not affecting the app in Mongo, So any more questions on uh, you have to put in multi column two. So coming back to Meteor, uh, this is what you are seeing in localhost column 3000, right? So by default, uh, if you go to the folder, you will see three files, uh, CSS, HTML and uh, JS, file, JS file. So in Meteor, So in media you can create folder structures like this, client, server, public, library collections. So media has two kind of APIs, uh, you can go to docs.media.com to see all the APIs which media has. So media has client APIs which works only on client, client side of it. So you can put all your client side APIs inside the client folder. So you can write a, a JS file uh, inside the uh, client, client folder and put your APIs inside that. Same case with server also. If you want to work with server, you can uh, create a server folder and put all the APIs inside inside it. Public folder is where you add all your images, uh, all all that kind of stuff. Uh, libraries is where uh, you can add 
So anything outside client and server, uh, it's like you can add both server and client side APIs in that. Uh, we will see. We will see how it how, how we are doing that. Collections basically is is just to add new collections and all. So we'll see that uh, how it works. So if you come back to our app, uh, you have three folders: hello world .css, hello world .html, and hello world .js. So we'll just open hello world .html. So here we have a layout file. Uh, this, this is only really specific. It's okay if you just specify it once. So all the uh, media media pages you make will have the same layout. And uh, this is a, basically a template. So what we are doing is that we are uh, making a template on a script. We have pressed the button and we are actually calling it over here. So th that's how we call a template. So we can just modify it. Uh, for example, if you want to create a navigation bar. Uh, first, what we will do is that we will add bootstrap library to it. So, in order to add bootstrap library, we need to uh, close the current uh, uh, working media. We can press Ctrl C and you can uh, close the server. DB, let it be later. So you can add to add libraries. What you can do is that uh, meteor add bootstrap. So this will add bootstrap to your app. So you don't have to write that script. Uh, you don't have to locally download the script, and you don't have to uh, uh, write the code. This will automatically add bootstrap to your app. After adding bootstrap against a meteor. So we are creating another template known as Navar. We'll paste the bootstrap navigation basket over here. And we can write it back. Insert inside the body. So both stuff is added, and we created a template. So, if you guys have any doubts till this time, any questions? So this is the HTML file. We are creating a template known as Navbar. Okay, and inside that we are create we are pasting the Bootstrap navigation basket, and we are calling it inside this file. Uh, we can uh, write templates in different files. So, Peter doesn't uh, really care about the file structure. So, you can put it anywhere in, in any 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 file. Uh, you just have to write the template name where you, wherever you want to refer. So, we can write the files anywhere. Can we move on, or is there anything else you would like to know? Okay.
So it, I copied from Bootstrap 2.3. So currently Meteor adds Bootstrap 2.3 version. So you just copy that and paste it. Is there any easy way to upgrade to Bootstrap 3 or is it still So there is a uh, the inbuilt Meteor package comes with Bootstrap 2.3. But so there is package Bootstrap where you can add it. So that was the basic app we created. Now uh, what you have to do is that you have to clone my repo. So just come out of that and uh, just clone this repository. Can you show the link once again? Okay. Yeah, link for each other. So you will be seeing something like this. Are you getting this thing? Just uh, after throwing the repository, type in Meteor and start running and you will see this. Are you getting the, uh, have you all downloaded the repository and are you able to see it? It's downloading video to somebody. You go inside the folder and... Uh, yeah, clone the repository, go inside the folder, type in video. Are you getting it? Yeah, it's downloading, downloading video to the person. Okay. By default, Meteor comes with uh, Bootstrap. By default, Meteor doesn't come with Bootstrap. We have to add Bootstrap. So, in the last example, where you added the Lipper, you, you added the Bootstrap CSS line? No, I just added Meteor add Bootstrap. So, it will automatically add or add that to your app. You don't have to manually specify the CSS line. So, if you want to remove Bootstrap, you can type Meteor remove Bootstrap. So, you don't have to manually you know, undergo the pain of writing. I <laughs> I'm going to download the 
Can you just talk a little bit about the scaffolding and how, so when I go to Logos to tell them what HTML is, how does it get structured? Are you going to have to No, I'm trying to talk Anyone was successful in downloading it? What is Meteor 2? Ah. Yes. I think the server was, the server was having some issues. Now people have started getting it. Still Start 
So we have client files, client folder, collection folder, libraries folder, public and server. Uh, what I have done is that I have uh, made views folder. So you can put anything. Uh, basically, you can add anything inside client. So all the front end part of the code you will be writing inside the client folder itself. So there is no structure and all. You can write however you want. Uh, so I've just created a CSS folder and there's a file known as styles.css. So you we can write whatever styles you want inside it. So uh, which is the register? Yeah, I'll come to that. I'll come to that. So this is styles folder. You can write whatever styles you want. You don't have to link styles and all. You, have, you can create uh, any files and you can write right on top of that. So layout.html is the index. It's kind of index file. So where I have specified the title of the page, head, body, and uh, yeah, that's it. So you have to specify this only in one file. Any file you can mention it, and Meter will automatically add it to every every file. So the file name itself doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't Meter matter. will look for something which yeah. has a head and body. Yeah. Yeah. And so inside that, I have you have. Uh, Called navigation bar. Navigation bar is something uh, is right here. So it basically about uh, navigation bar with static HTML inside, and a dashboard file and a dashboard template, which is again another template. So you can just go through it. It's uh, there's no media uh, server side scripts and client side APIs. There's very basic HTML and static data, and they are called uh, to display. So if you can, if you have any doubts on that. Please ask me. So, just go through the repository in total. So, basically, different files are just for structuring purpose. If you want, you can just put everything into a single file. Yeah, it's true. So, you can you can actually do that. So, if you if you if you once you install Meteor, uh, if, uh, when you install Meteor, create Hello World, you will see that right. There's only three files. So, just to structure, I have created it. But uh, you can put however you want. So what all does Meteor end up adding by the time it serves the index HTML? How big is the payload? So Meteor has its own packages like uh, live data package, DDP package, which comes up comes up with Meteor. So I think recently they had an update, uh, which happened like one hour back. Okay. That's why it has okay. taken time. Please navigate to the repository. Or only you can navigate to the dashboard.html, layout.html, and keyboard.html. If you find any anything, if you don't understand anything, please ask. Yeah. View source on the page. Yeah. There's nothing. So just the JavaScript. Yeah. It's like that. Yeah. So like completely rendered. Is someone still struggling to uh, get this running? So this is how it works. We have templates, HTML files, which you just went through. 
Then we have client side files which handles the HTML, HTML files. For example, if we want to add handlebars and all, basically adding it to the client side files. Then we will have some server side files which, for security reasons, will be uh, writing most of the code in our server side. So what happens is that client side uh, makes a call to the server side files, and then based on the result, we are updating the templates. So that's how a basic meter app works. So we will need a, we are making, making a collaboration tool, so we need these four collections, teams collections, missions collections, status collection and message collection. So we can add it by, there is a folder known as collections, just add a file inside that. This is a folder known as collections. No, no, no. Okay, I think the uh, uh, folder was blank, so we didn't upload it. So just make folder known as collection and add this file inside that. So this is how you define a collection. Uh, we don't use the variable at all. Uh, we have a direct line missions is equal to new meter dot collection. So a collection is defined for that. So we can do that for all the collections. What is that structure inside collections? What is, what is that structure message messages mission statements? So it's like your, your the tables in SQL databases. So we have here in Mongo we have collections. So it should be in title case. Yeah, meter and uh, no, it shouldn't be in title case. You can put over here. So we have defined four collections now. So just like we did the Mongo insert, you can insert in the collection. So it's like meter dot insert. Name is equal to same. So this is the ID of the inserted key, inserted document. One of the collections. Yeah. So it's uh, 
same thing for these shoes. Are you all done with collections? Creating any collections? Yeah. So right now, what we have here is a static template. So this is uh, one team. Hasgi Workshop is one team. So let's see how we can connect the static template with the original collection. So what we can do is that. First we go to console and put in a new team known as teams.insert and we will give the name as geek so if you see id it means that it's inserted now we will come back to <coughs> dashboard.html So this is the place where we want uh, to be added. So we'll go to there's a file on helpers.js inside js folder, which is inside client folder. So just go to the folder. So this is inside a template known as dashboard. The Hasgi code shop is inside a template known as dashboard. So what we will be doing is we will be creating template dot dashboard dot helpers is equal to function. So, we are creating a variable teams, uh, inside that we are returning all the teams which are finding. So we have created a handlebar on a Teams. So we'll see how we can link it into the dashboard template. So what you're going to do is that these team box get repeated uh, should be repeated for each teams. So what we will do is we'll add hash each hash each. So here we'll add the key name which we gave, which is basically name. And if we come back, uh, each teams. So we need to specify the variable other thing also. So we can see so the teams. Okay. 
So what we are doing is for each teams, uh, we are showing that this is the key which must be added. We are adding it each. Come back to the console. You can go on adding what we uh, teams teams start insert. So you can see that. So are you able to get it, or you have some doubts? So, for this app, I have to defend that it should run only on local host, but it is running globally. Uh, I didn't get it. Are you, are you asking me if it's, a, if it's running on client or in the server? I am saying that I am running the both thing in my dev box, which is a VM. Okay. Now, it is, in the dev box, it is saying app running at local host port 3000, but I am not able to view it on the web. So it's it's something uh something problem with lack of the so this is the dashboard I the same thing I do with your teaching app or media workshop. Classes, the same thing. 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 The same so you come to the yeah, it is running in my dev, but same, it is running in my dev, I how do I change this to so how do we deploy it in production? In production, you will actually bundle it and deploy it. So can you just type in the media? Uh, code, 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 and equal to 80 to 80. Just just Google it and wait So anyone is having any doubts on till this part? Everything is fine, right? Can you show me that one that is? Sure. Yeah. So you're using off Windows? Can you show me? 
So you mean where, where does the collection is? The collection things. I will get to that. Any any other questions? Okay. The team helper would be only restricted to the uh, dashboard template. Yes. So now uh, we have created a created the dashboard. We'll next go to the teams wall. So what? Uh, so right now I'm not working on routing. So we'll just change the change it in the layout file. So just replace dashboard with team wall. So you'll be seeing something here. You can do that. So you'll be seeing something like this. Are you getting this? So you have to go to layout.html. Uh, inside the body, there's a, a line on the dashboard. Just replace that with team wall. What uh, We changed it to the right? Yeah. So, so what is going on? Okay, so team wall is a template which is inside team wall.html. So this is basically a static HTML template which I've created. Okay. There's no data in it. It's all is like uh, local static HTML. Okay. Get it? So now I know uh, we will now wire uh, collections into this. We'll start with status. So status is uh, inside inside a template on a status container. Okay. So can someone tell me the code to write? So the template name container dot status is equal to function return. You don't have to wait for me, you can add it for all the other collections, the same code. The same code we wrote for teams, each status. Put status here, or uh, we put full name here.
So if you have done that, you can just uh, insert a new status. Status dot insert. So we get it moved. The profile picture is right now static. We will change it later. So this is you are changing on the side, right? But uh, when you are changing it, uh, then there are new uh, dates on the more DB side from other client. Okay. All those are pushed to the other one. Yeah, I will get to that. So right now we are not just working on the client side, we are working on the server side also. We will get to that, we will get to that in detail. So are you able to do this? Till, are you able to achieve till this, this step? So we are now uh, going to do the same thing with missions also. Complete name is mission container.
Any problems? So if you see the these as blank, we need to insert into the status collection. So right now it's not anyway uh, fetching from local collection, local static HTML. It's fetching from server server side uh, collection. So you need to add insert it. Otherwise, you will get it as blank. From where? So to insert it, you can just go to the uh, console and can insert. It. So. It's as simple as this. So I updated the status thing in the team wall. Uh, but how, I, how can I connect that to dashboard? Do I have to input team wall in the dashboard? So you want uh, so to the team wall? This is the dashboard page, right? This is right now in the team wall page. Where is the team wall page? Go to the layout file. Yeah. There's something known as dashboard. Is tasks a separate collection or a sub collection of the missions? It's a separate collection. So we do need to create another one of the collections. So yeah, we have to create. Guys, we need to create a collection on a stars. Thank you. 
Are you fine till this point? Do you have any doubts or something like that? Just don't wait for me, just go on. Uh, it's the same code you will be writing for mission stars and messages also. You can try the same code. So we'll do it for messages. So it's, it's inside the template known as chat container. So chat container dot messages is equal to function. Put on messages stop. I may put this up here. As simple as hash sheet messages. Some doubts? Yeah. Why is it that you are adding? You said you should try to start with So we have. So here we don't have a schema at all. Uh,
Uh, Asmin, this how I'm getting. Yeah. How are you writing that message there? What full name for that? Yeah, you can write like that. It's a insert operations are done like that. No, I'm asking where are those defects? Like how do they throw messages in the other messages? Okay, so it's if you go to the over here. I'm writing. So we are inserting from the console. Now we can add a. We can use these buttons itself to create, uh, create teams, add messages, and all these things. So we have created a model for this create team. So there's a file known as event.js. How do you associate? How do you find tasks of that particular mission? Uh, so I will be getting there. Oh. So, if you see the navigation bar, <laughs> this is inside a template known as now bar. Okay. So any events related to this, uh, we can identify them by adding template dot now bar dot events. Okay. And the event you want to add. So click as create team. So here uh, we have a in the team one template we only have update status and mission uh, and uh, those are the create uh, insert options we have. So we need to write that event here. So update status is the 
ID name and the model name is update status model. So if you do that, this is the name. And we will add function to this update status. So how we can do is that we have to see which template is the event in. <coughs> so if you go to team wall and search for update status. It's inside a template team wall. So we can add that template dot team wall dot events. Okay, we are getting this value of the status box. And we want the time in which it is updated, so we'll add time. So this is a, a function to which you get the unix time unix time right now and then we'll make an insert status dot insert. Variable which is status and time inside. So we we'll lock it just to know if it worked. So you are getting an ID which means it's added and it's updated. It's updated over here. So it's getting at it. So I'll go back to the code so we can look around it. If you have, uh, are you guys able to get this up? If you have any doubts or you have any issues? Can you show the previous? Nav one. Nav one. Yeah. So it's basically the same jQuery code here, right? Are you getting it? If you don't have to wait for me, you can just move on and you know it's the same code you can write all over the place for updating, adding missions, adding tasks. Okay. 
unable to catch up can you just raise your hand so so where exactly you struck her static html template called status so what you are right now doing is we created a helper for it so the helper for each template must match the template name so for example if you are creating a helper for this template or status container template you need to go to team wall find where is status So this is uh, this is the template name status container. <coughs> so in helper we have to define that variable name, which is state, <coughs> and we are putting it in uh, it's a function, and we are returning that all the status dot find just just return it to, just return the cursor to the variable. So coming back to the team wall for each status, we are putting in <coughs> and we are putting in status dot. So this is the the key name which you are given. So if it's different for you, it will be different. Ah, <coughs> uh, once again. So there's one one more. Uh, There's one more GitHub repo known as Team Sync. So, do you don't have to clone it? But you, if you fall behind, just go 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 through the code over there. If you if you fall behind or something like that, you can go and check out the complete code. <coughs> so we have added update status. We'll Move on to adding missions. Follow the this code. Uh, this is basically the same code. Uh, so what I am doing is that I am adding another event. So if we click on add mission, show the add mission model. So you will see something like this.
So we have shown the model. Now we will make a uh, we'll make this form work. So we need to find again where is the admission uh, ID is uh, ID is present. So we'll go to team wall. We'll search for admission. So it's inside a template. Team wall template. So we'll come back. We have another event here. So the ID name of the button is BTN admission. So we're getting the value of day, month, and year. This is a function to convert uh, this to Unix time. So we are converting day, month, and year from string to Unix time. And we are inserting it inside machines. So the idea of the text box is machine text box. And after that, we are just hiding the We'll try our animation. I'll just log if this got inserted.
So to debug we can use a command as debug. Oh, yeah, this is the hash in the button admission. Click. Oh yeah. Thanks. How would you display the date? The Unix function that we stored, how would we? Yeah, so we need to display the date. So for that, what you can do is that. Do we have a virtual folder? Yeah, so there's a library known as, uh, I mean, you might be familiar with moment.js. So, we can search for moment.js. So this is how we search for packages in video. Yeah, so we can add that. Meet tier add MRT colon moment.js. So if we don't even know the name, so that's where you can go to atmosphere.js.com. So here you can get all the package names and things like that. So Take some time to add. Yeah, it's added. I will again run media. So if you go to back to team one. We need to create a helper to convert Unix time to date. For that, uh, we'll do that. Okay, so we'll go to helpers. Template dot. Again, which template is it running? It's in mission container. So missions container dot date put a function.
So, so what what you are doing is that you are creating a helper known as date. So, this dot time which is actually referring to the time the time inside missions. So, inside missions we have value inserted. We inserted it as the key value name time. So, uh, this helper is using it. Is there any way to pass an argument to it? Yeah, you can also pass an argument to it. Uh, you can add, actually pass like value and let's, let's call the test value. This is the most good thing. Uh, this is the deep sync. Meteor and then add meteor add MRT colon moment JS. MRT. What is that So MRT, so if you go to atmosphere JS.com, <laughs> so we have packages in Meteor. Okay. So this is like third party packages. So you can here you can search for any package you want. So each package has a unique name. Okay. So moment J, for moment JS it's Oh, okay. You get this. Okay. After after you add it, you can run it back and add it. So you still having some confusion confusions in this? Yeah, it's 
So you can clear all the mission by going to medium Mongo and typing. Now we will try to add tasks to this machine. So uh, we need to make this button work. So we'll just go there and go to event.js again. So this is under uh, this is inside the fun inside the template team wall. So again inside team wall we'll be creating another click event. This is not inside the um, taskbar, it's inside machine container. If you see, uh, once again, let me get this right. So, it's inside a template called as machine container. So, what you have to do is that you have to go to events or JS. You have to create another event handler like template dot missions container dot events. Click as attacks call function. I will just take the name of the model. <laughs> Add task model. <laughs> it's showing the model, but we need to tell uh, that when you click on this task. This particular mission, uh, it is added to this particular mission. So, can anyone tell how, how can we do that? So, we have a value over here. Mm -hmm. Once again. So, what we can basically do is, so this is inside each mission, so we can add a attribute known as underscore id. So, each uh, each collection, when you insert to each collection, there is automatically a ID variable which has been added by the MongoDB itself. It's a randomly generated ID which has been added. Okay, that's a unique identifier for that particular document. <laughs> so with using this, uh, now we need to create another. Uh, so right now we have created an event for this or this button. Now we have to create an event for this button. So this is inside a template known as. Uh, Team wall. Uh, that's basically this this one. Add task model. So that uh, ID of the button is btn add task. So we need to add that function. So we will go to helper dot js. Events of this sorry. And we'll add that. We need the text box name for that. So the text box name is task text box. We need the ID of the mission which we clicked in. So what you can do is that you can put in event. So ID, ID is, is basically the value of that uh, of that particular target. So we can call it by our mission ID equal to 
event dot current target dot value so if task not equal to we can add task dot insert mission id colon mission id comma task and we can hide the task dot okay. So we haven't uh, config uh, change the static HTML over here. We'll do that. So we'll go to. We'll go to that particular task model. Same thing. Each task as each. So we need to define a helper for this. Template dot. Teams. Oh, sorry, pass. So you can see the task which is just added before. So before adding other stuffs, if you go to media. Are you guys done till here or you guys need any help? So, right now, uh, can you tell anyone where you where, where get stuck or something like that so that you can continue with it? The mission ID is getting inserted as empty for each task. Okay, so we'll take a short break.
and then we'll be back. So if you have, if you are still struggling with it, please come to me. So we'll have 15 minutes break. We we'll have some uh, coffee upstairs. Just get a break and then be back at 12 o'clock. Thank you. So I will finish off this part, then add it to the Git repo so that you can uh, pull it and you can kind of resume working so that if you have foreign back you can catch it. So the problem here was when you click on this this button, uh, on this button, yeah, this button and when you click on add task, actually the if you see, if you inspect the element, The value is getting added here, and when you click on that, uh, this uh, bar is getting loaded. But when you click on add task, that particular variable is not found. So what we can do here is we can add something on sessions. So session variables uh, helps us to uh, uh, add something like you know showing a showing a model pop up or adding a model pop up. Some functions like this we use it. We can also use it for adding a particular task. So for example, adding a particular task in a machine. What happens is that when you click on this particular task, the variable is set to current task, current machine variable is set to this particular uh, machine's ID. And then what you are doing is that when you are inserting it, we will call that session.get current machine ID. So we will see how it works. So first we need to uh, make this event work, so which is inside even start chase yeah we'll just check if it's the same event So you see the ID. So what you can right now do is we can make a session variable. Session dot set current mission ID comma event dot current target dot value. And then When you insert it, session dot get okay. So this should do the job. Thank <laughs> you. 
चेपी आने So here uh, we are returning the task. So what we can do is that we to return at a task of particular mission ID. We can put our mission ID. This will be session dot get. Oh sorry, mission ID. Current mission ID is only set after we add the one. Once you click on the one, so current mission ID is set when you click on this particular one.
Okay, so the form was hash. So we'll just go remove the the task was not added because the variable was undefined. So now we come back and we'll return the task and we'll add it. So it's coming. So we have added, we have linked the helper fully for the model, and we need to do the same uh, for the machine container. So how we can do is that. So we'll go back to Timbo, and we'll find out where where is the machine container, which is. So here, uh, the problem is we have missions and we have tasks inside. It. So what we need to do is that we need to pass ID of the mission to this task helper, so that we can match that this task belongs to this particular mission, and we can add it. So what we can do is that we can just pass the variable ID, and we have to create a helper known as. Okay, we haven't created a helper, so we'll create a helper known as template dot task is equal to function, and we'll pass the ID over here. Return task dot mission ID call mission. ID. Now if we refresh. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So that part is done. Now we can see it how we can uh, edit the task, like completed or not completed. So how we can do that is. We have to create another event uh, in inside machine container, which is input, yeah, which is input event for the text box. So whenever there's a uh, uh, no, not input event, if, if the check box is checked or not, so it's a so we'll check that. How we can do that? Find out where the checkbox is actually present. So it's inside. It's present inside the mission container uh, template. So we'll go to mission container events. Click hash. Call uh, function event. Uh, 
task dot update so here we need to give a value so we need to find out which id must be updated so what you can do is that we can put the value as id so we will put It's a set operation. Uh, can you see how, how to get the value of the checkbox? Uh, even dot current target dot check will okay. Is it completed? Yes, works. So that's how we change it. Could you show me HTML more? Right? So I will uh, complete this and uh, I'll push to the repository and then you can download it. Then I will again uh, explain it so that you, you guys can understand what was going on. So we added task. Now we need to change this progress bar. Uh, as the task is updated, so what we can do is that it's again another function we can create, another helper we can create. So this is the static HTML which I have done. So what you can do is that you would help us uh, mission container helpers. We'll add another thing on progress. So we need to find the total task. Uh, task top find. Uh, so we need to find the before that we need to find uh, the ID of the mission. So Right here, what, you, what is happening is that since uh, it's inside this missions uh, helper, what happens is that if you type this uh, this dot uh, var mission id equal to this dot underscore id, it should be since since uh, we are calling the progress inside this helper, so we'll be writing a progress helper here. So and we are inside this each mission, so this dot id will give the mission id. And we need to find, so we'll take a count of that and we'll make a count of uh, completed task. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Come on, complete it. 
okay so now we need to create return completed tasks by total tasks then uh, just to make sure we just alert it so that There is no wish here. Yeah, the we progress. We haven't referenced the variable now. So we will just focus. Okay. Now what we will do is. Task will be to update this. I think you you can you could have already completed it. So we'll add another event. So which is send message. We'll go to event dot js. And this is inside a chat, chat container. So template dot chat container dot events. Click as soon as is calling function. Uh, Our message is equal to text box name. Text box ID is text box. Give name as a hard code value and message. Message. So the numbers. Uh, the problem is we created full name. So now if you put it close, close. Yeah. So now I will push to the repository and please pull it so that we can we are sync together to continue. I will again explain how it works.
Yeah, you can pull it and now I'm again going to again explain how, how the entire system works again. So far, we have created uh, three collections. Uh, one first one is the teams collection. So in Meteor, we we can we we have to define the head uh, layout template layout of the HTML only once. So that's what we did in layout of HTML. Uh, if you see here, we have, we we have to only define it once, and you can write your templates anywhere uh, inside any folders anywhere you want. Meteor will actually fetch it up. So it's a good practice to uh, have a good folder structure, which is something like this. So where in the client we can have all the views, all HTML and client side JavaScript functions. In the server, you can, in the server folder you can have all the server side functions. Uh, in the collections folder, in any other fo uh, folder where you want to use both server side and client side APIs, APIs we can use something like uh, collections or public or something like that. So here what we are doing is that we are making a template called as navbar. And now is referenced over here. So that's why you see the navigation bar on the top. And in the dashboard, if you see, so the dashboard is in the temp in the file known as dashboard.html. So you can give name namings as you want. It's not necessary that you have to keep, keep dashboard.html or something like that. You can keep whatever you want. Vita is uh, good enough to uh, find the template wherever you write it. So in the dashboard, we see that uh, there's a there is a handlebar known as each teams. Okay, so what this does is that if you go to the helper and if you see dashboard dot <coughs> teams. So what is what it does is that it this function uh, returns a cursor actually. Okay, so that that's why we, we wrote something like this. If you see another functions which is like. No, one second. Um, before you call the dot teams, that uh, template dot dashboard must be initialized to something, right? Template dot dashboard. Yeah. What is that? So template dot dashboard means that dashboard is defined as a template. Okay, this is what you are referring to. Yeah. So template is dashboard is defined as a template. You get that right. So what you are doing is that we are creating a helper for this dashboard. So, uh, Meteor basically will create the template variable and a dashboard variable for you based yeah. on the template in the HTML. Exactly. Okay, and then, uh, so here, whenever you are returning a cursor, you will be doing something like this. Okay, so whenever you want a, something like uh, waited for progress and all, we have to define uh, in, uh, in, in, this, in this example. So, so when you're uh, doing a cursor, cursor-like functions, you have to uh, pass it as each teams. So it will iterate through each teams and so then a name is a key inside the teams collection. So that particular documentation, and it is the same thing for. It is the same thing for all, all these things where where in which uh, you are just adding the uh, helper function for, for for status its status. You can see that in helpers.js. And we are returning status.find. And we are linking that over here. Each status. And we are put, uh, we are linking the full name and the status update. So this full name and status update must match the collection key names. So right now you can go and clone back my repository. Have you cloned it? Cloned it up so that you can continue. Yeah, 
Yeah. There's two types of syntax that you're using. Sometimes you're just going um, the template name. So this is a syntax you use it for returning a cursor. So this is actually returning a cursor. Yeah. And when you're returning a value, particularly, so if you see here, it's returning a value. Yeah. So, so this is a syntax. You can't it. return cursors in like helpers. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Because I just actually did get it using that syntax that seemed to work. Okay. So it's uh, in the media documents. It's it's shown in this way. So. Oh. so can you come down inside the helper function? That uh, messages, listens, tweets, and all are coming from the common SAM folder. Is it collections? So it's defined as collections. Okay. So we don't have to write separate uh, separate files for messages, missions, and status and tasks. You can write all in one file. But there's some other reason I am doing that. I will get back to that. So this is defined as collection. So it's coming from the collections itself. So before the client server file uh, gets uh, <laughs> executed, these things will be... Yeah, I, will, I am going to explain that. So if you have cloned the repository, now we can try something like this. You go back to the local host. Uh, so just to do, uh, write this command, meteor remove photo publish. And again we are running meteor. Also, in collections, every collection is a global, I think. I, will, I am coming to that. One second. Give me one second. So if you run the app again, everything is gone. So can someone got an idea what happened just now? There are no elements in the fields. No. So what happened was, till now we were working on collections and they were accessible both pub, uh, both in the server side and the client side okay so what happened was actually server in the server side uh, everything which server had it published it to collections in the client side so what actually happens is that meteor has server side collections and client side collections till now uh, we were in development mode so we had the package not, not as auto published so what auto published it was that it was pushing all the server side uh, whatever there is, what was was there in the server side database to the client side. Now I am removing the auto publish, and that's not a good practice, right? You can you can't push all uh, the entire database of your server side to the client side, right? You need to only publish which is relevant. So we have removed the auto publish uh, feature, uh, auto publish package. Now we need to uh, we will come across something known as. So was publishing, so you keep uh, some kind of web socket kind of thing, or connection, or how you can publish separate. Yeah, I, I, I am coming to that. So before we go to uh, the public uh, publications and subscriptions, so there's something in media we have something known as publications and subscriptions. So what we do is that in publications we define it what 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 function or what uh, kind of data you want to publish. And in subscribe, the client actually uh, put the parameters like this is the, this is the parameters which I want. And what uh, publications does is that it uh, takes the client's parameters. It checks for other. It checks if the client has enough authentication if uh, for the data to be passed. Then the publisher publishes. So we'll we'll go to that. Before that, what we will do is that we will create routes for our pages. So right now we are working by you know changing the template name. So we can add actually you know localhost calling 3000 slash dashboard, localhost calling 3000 slash team. So what it does is that it will rewrite it to your particular particular pages. So how we can do is that we can create a uh, I think there's a So this is the API for Rota function. So you can go. Uh, uh, Meter has a default router, but uh, we will be using something known as Iron Router. Okay. So in order to add Iron Router, what you have to do is that go to the console and type in 
stop the local news and type in uh, meteor add MRT colon uh, meteor add iron colon router. So I'll write that function now. Meteor add So here, this is the template name, dashboard. This is the path which you are providing. Here. Okay. So we can have more attributes. So if you go to the end router uh, GitHub uh, document, you can actually have there are like more parameters like wait on something on before, on after. So it's basically like before routing, after routing, uh, wait until uh, the uh, the function is done. So we can have all those things inside end router. Okay. So. Before I move on, I mean, I want to make sure that you are uh, in, uh, you are uh, kind of sure of uh, the things which we did right now, like templates, handlebars, collections. Are you all fine first with that? Argument is the template name. So first argument, this is the template name. This is the root. Okay. Okay, but why does it take uh, the breakdown and all? I will get back to that. So I'm just showing a, a sample uh, syntax of. Or, or, or. Are you guys sure of what you are doing right now or should I continue or you want me to explain any other topic? With the collections, we are just going messages equals something. So messages is like global, right? global variable. So messages is not a variable actually, it's a collection. Yeah, but it's globally available. So it, it is available both on the server side and the client side. Yeah. You get that right. Can't, is, can't I namespace those collections so that it's not there? Uh, problem. So something like you are asking, like it's uh, for a security reason when you console, uh, when you add, anyone can add to the console by console, like teams dot insert. No, more more about just clashing of like the global scope. So like if I have 20, 25 collections, okay, 20, 25 global variables which I scope. Okay. If I can just namespace them into something, then there's less variables. I, can I think we will talk about that offline. Sure. So, any, any, anything else which you would like to know? Are you kind of uh, sure of what you are doing? Yeah, fine. So, we will start adding the router function, the router function. So, what you can do is that. So there is a file known as library, inside that there is a file known as router.js. So we will go uh, the index page. So we have an index template somewhere in, oh, we have home template. So we will, so we, if you see our uh, first page, it is actually blank. So we will route our router to the uh, index space. So So we uh, no longer no, no, need this, so we'll just you know, we'll just keep it as now works. So. so we have a home template or oh, now it's probably What is the this? 
Yeah. So the problem was th this dot route. So it's nothing but meteor dot route. So it's a this an API call. It's a client side API. Okay, so if it's a client side API, you need to put it inside if media.is client. If you want to access some server side API, you can put it as if media.is. Oh, that's clear. Yeah, so the so we have added. What about the JS files that we added? Um, the helpers and those are those. Do we not have to add a check saying this is client side or server side? Or? So yeah, yeah, that's the point. That's, a, that's what I said, right? So if you put it inside the client, that it then it's it automatically client. So why are we not putting router inside client? So libraries. Uh, I think there are two routers. One is server side the router. Yeah. So there, like. It, you can actually put it inside the client side library, but then it's you know you can use it both for server and client. So we are just putting. It in. We can add uh, some more things like dashboard slash dashboard. You just add the media package back so that media are not published. And just for the page, we can see that if pages are moving. It loads after the navigation uh, after if you see the error is me after the after an hour after the first template it's a routing added. So if I have two templates, would it add it after the second one? So is it, I mean I'm trying to guess is it the end of the body or is it after the first element it finds? It's the first element up because navigation was in the top right. So if I have a footer so yeah. How do I tell it that it's between the header and the footer? So you can actually one thing you can do is that you can add something like this footer, and you can define a template. Right. So now, how does it know that the routing goes between the navbar and the footer? Are navbar okay, okay, concepts no, no. that Meteor knows about? Are those keywords? No, 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 no. Uh, no. Uh, you know that doesn't work. The footer doesn't work like that. So, so what you have to do is that you can actually create. Uh, separate templates, mm -hmm. and you can uh, so in the meteor uh, blaze. There's a uh, meteor templating engine is known as blaze. Okay. Okay. So in that blaze, uh, we can actually uh, pass that function UI render. So if you look at the database, you will mm -hmm. if you templating engine is blaze. Yeah. It's not handled by. Uh, no meteor has uh, meteor has a template known as templating engine known as blaze. Which uses handles. Which uses handles. Yeah. Okay. So, so the mount point, uh, you can define it in Blaze, right? the, the navigation mount point. So this is not what you mean. Sorry, I missed the. So, the Blaze is actually for UI rendering. Yes, yes, I, I get that part. So, coming back to the question, so if you have like, so like I said, like most applications will have nav and footer as common things. Yeah, or maybe have a mount point. Nav, yeah. Like, you might have different parts. Yeah. So, and then you can put it on the individual giant template. Right. Yeah. So what you can do is that uh, one uh, one more thing. What you can do is that inside the template itself, we can call the footer after the template is done. Uh, then you will be repeating it over and over. Yeah, I think there is a better way of that in, in by using base template in itself. Thank you. 
so router dot map function uh, it's a server side function so what you can do is uh, so it, it actually automatically detects if it's server side or client side actually render so you don't have to put a vdn or base kind function so right now what it is doing is that it's taking the home uh, it's to routing the main index template to home it's routing the dashboard template to uh, dashboard uh, path to dashboard and it's routing Team what I'm to team. Okay, now we will remove the auto publish feature. Now we can define like uh, what you want to publish from the uh, from the server side to the client side. So we can do that by so this is this is almost uh, everything is server side. So we don't want to give client the ability to push and things like that. So what we are doing is that we are putting our all the server side APIs inside the server folder. So if you open the server folder, this is a file known as publication.js. Okay. So let's see how this works. So this is the server side API for it. Media.publish teams data. So this is a new, uh, you can give, you're, you're giving a name for your publications. Okay. And this is teams.find. So collections.find. Uh, and in the client side, you're subscribing it. So the best, uh, you know, the best uh, way, I mean, the best position to, the best place to subscribe it is in the router itself. So for example, if you're going to teams page, you can subscribe the particular teams missions and tasks and all. If you are going to dashboard page, you can uh, you can subscribe to teams which user you, you belongs to. Okay, so uh, you get this right, right? Are you having any doubts in this? So this we write in the server side. We, this we can write uh, in the router itself. So auto publish by default just exposes the entire database. Here now we can pick and choose what part of that collection. Exactly. So auto publish is basically for developing uh, de development mode. So when you run in production mode, you have to use something like this. 
and uh, when you before you push it to production, is there a warning or something like that which says, hey, you have auto publish on? Because uh, I, as I understand, if you have auto publish on, your users collection also basically gets. Uh, if, if if you are, for example, if in your production state, if your auto publish is on, your site doesn't load because of the data you are getting in. Um, well, if you're starting off, you won't have that amount of data. Uh, okay, so I think what you can do, I mean, you have to. I think when you bundle it up, it actually gives you a warning. Uh, most probably, it will give you a warning, and I mean, I've noticed that. So otherwise, what you can do is that when you before you publish, you can put in VTL list. Okay. So what it does is that it gives you all the packages. So we can choose from it. I think it gives you a warning. I have, I think I have noticed that. So it gives you a warning. So hope you're clear with this, or you want uh, any of this, any of the topic which is to be really explained. So can we can the client pass a parameter? Yeah. Actually, I was waiting for the question. So if you pass in this dot subscribe teams data comma and the web, some variable, and we can call, we can actually uh, get that an argument over here, and we can actually manipulate it. Any other questions? So, uh, what we will be doing is that we get our publish in its data. So we have published it right now. And if we go to the order. What does it mean when you do publish? Does it expose a SQL endpoint for that color sign? So I mean I understand that. Since traditional developers, I mean, traditional web developing, it, something is so the publication submission itself is something strange for you guys. Right. So it's like uh, it's not actually a restful endpoint. Uh, I think it's more, we should, it's more like a stream that is available that if you need to you can hook on. Yeah. So if you want, there is data available. This is a this is more like a socket endpoint. Yeah. So basically, it's, uh, it works on something known as DDP. So it doesn't use HTTP. No. So DDP is known as distributed data protocols. So it's it's a function is that. No. Any other questions you have? And it's not just for DDP. Right. Yeah, I will come to write. We are we actually wrote many stuff, right? Yeah. Team dot update team dot insert. Everything was writing. Yeah, yeah. But using publish, you can write as well. It's not. We publish is actually used to give the data from the server side to the client side. There's no write at all. Okay. So we have something like uh, server side database, which is having all the, for example, say Teams database. Until this point, of, after we removed auto publish, the client has no idea which team the user belongs to at all. Right. So we are right now publishing it, and we'll see how it works. We have published it right now, and we can go to the router. And we can add one more, uh, no, not this one. Comma, wait on. Oh, this is right. So, just start subscribe. Teams. Okay, now let's pass an argument and see how it works. Come on, I just want one value. So we'll go back to publications. We'll call this as limit. Come on, limit. Call it limit. Now we'll go back. Right. So you get that right? Or you want me to explain it again? What is the first argument or the second argument? It's only one argument, there's no two arguments. Teams start Yeah, so teams, oh yeah, I'll tell you, sorry. So in the router.js, you're subscribing to teams data. 
team's data is the publication name. So publication must be defined over here. Right. So this particular publication, the router is subscribing. And this is how much you want. You don't want the entire team because like, you want a particular limit. So we will set it to say for example 5. And Now what you have to do is that we have teams. We need to create a link between. Uh, we have to create unique links for to all the teams, right? So right now we have one team and we are pu pu pushing everything into one team. So let's see how how that works. So if you go to the dashboard.html and so there's a button go right and we have a value over here what you can do is that we can add id okay and we'll go back to events So template dot dashboard once again. Uh, yeah, we didn't define any events, so we'll go back. Template dot dashboard dot events. Click hash VTN go is the function call function total call go slash teams hash plus event dot current target dot value. So if you do this and if you come back, click on this, it's going to that particular. But if you see the router.js, this is not what you want. We want to pass that, we want to fetch that particular ID. So what you can do is that you can put in colon ID and with slash will be slash to slash code ID or it's slash code we will see that now wait on function we'll just log it <laughs> yeah, so it's slashing. So this is what param dot id gives you that that particular ID. So right now we have got so if you come back to dashboard. We have linked the we have published the relevant data which dashboard needs, and we have published uh, in the teams. We need to publish what what all missions, what all tasks, what all messages are uh, this uh, particular team uh, this particular team ID has. So we can do that by we can make another session variable session dot set team id comma uh, this dot param dot id so 
so that we can reference it whenever we need inside the helpers etc uh, question so these session variables are they also available on the server side no so you will have to pass them yeah and i'll just uh, add it to the git repo so that if you are guys if you are falling back and closing it The meter code is hot swap, right? So yeah. you don't need to shut down the server. Yeah, so you don't have to so whenever you save the files, it's automatically refreshing the client server. So yeah. So now what you have to do is that we have I pushed the repo so if you have you can pull it and you can work on that. Uh, we'll come back to the team wall. We'll see what all functions does does it need. So we'll start with status. So we'll give all the status which this team, particular team ID belongs to. But when we did we uh, when we inserted the status. We did did we did not collect any image. So we did not add the team ID here. So we have to add it. So our variable team ID is equal to session bar with team ID. And we can add that team ID yeah. So we will just check if this works Team ID is inserted So we won't see that because we haven't published it yet. But you will see a ID over here. Uh, we can do something like DB dot status of and underscore ID. See the team ID. So that's added. So we will do the same thing for everything actually. Uh, missions also. We will do the same for the tasks also. Oh. 
Yeah. Now, uh, so when we insert, everything is inserted to a particular team. So I will just push the push it again so that. If you're falling back, back please don't worry. So now we uh, we have added uh, a team ID for each each of the collection like messages, uh, chat, and everything. So we will see how to publish. It's again very simple. And go to publications. Add meteor or publish. Uh, we will start with status data. Status dot find, and we can actually have a team ID over here as an argument, and we can add team ID for the team ID, and in the router or JS. Start subscribe status data comma session or in that case just start panel start ID comma so we come back sorry. So we can add on the status publications. Add. Okay. So we can do some some more things like we need to get the la uh, last uh, last ten status updates. So what we can do is that we can actually pass sort colon. Yeah, it's coming. It was okay. So you guys have any doubts until this point? If we weren't using the router, where would we subscribe? So if you don't, uh, so the this dot subscribe is a client side function. Yeah. So you can subscribe it anywhere, anywhere, anywhere in the client side, so anywhere in the client folder, any any JS file you can subscribe to. So router is one of the good, good places to subscribe because really that particular page. Is. Any other questions which anyone has? So router runs from server side. Runs from server. Router. Uh, so router has server side routes and client side routes. So so when we access server side routes, we can also use it as a RESTful services for post and take. Yeah, but that is not preferred in a medium. Okay, so uh, RESTful services are not not all preferred because it's an inefficient way of doing it. We have to use something like public instructions. Until you are uh, getting a huge amount of data like images and videos and all, that makes sense for a uh, get, uh, get thing. But for uh, data like this, with data, it's very efficient to use public instructions. Is it possible? To use? It's possible. It's completely possible. I'm thinking of scenarios where I want to expose an API. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I and I get that. So, for example, if you're using an Android app, right, you want uh, this thing. So, but what here we have is not something known as distributed data protocols. Okay. So we can actually use this. Uh, this basically works on sockets. 
So what you can do is that if you are making an Android app, there's something known as socket, uh, socket I/O libraries, right? So you can use that and connect it to the media server. Media works on sockets itself, and you can subscribe to the function and you'll be subscribed. So whenever there's some changes, the socket connection also get updated. The protocol that's used for communication is WebSocket, not HTTP. No. It has a HTTP for WebSocket. Yeah, it's, it's completely different. It's just on WebSocket. So. Any other questions? When, when we inserted the status, um, what if the server says you don't have permission? I'll get back there. Anything else? Then just really you can plan accordingly. It's one fifteen is gonna be about in fifteen minutes. Okay. Anything else you would like to know? So we can do the same for Missions data. Messages data. We don't have time, so we can do that. In messages, we have time, so we will be there. And missions, we have cinema's red line, so I think it's not really. So we have to subscribe for this in the We have uh, added publications. Uh, I mean, we have added status according to according to the team ID. So every team will now have a unique uh, unique uh, ID, and every team page will show different data. So you can go to dashboard and check it out. So this dashboard doesn't have the data, and this dashboard is there. 
So you guys get it right? So before uh, we go for the lunch, we will complete the login part of it. So in Meteor, uh, the best part is that uh, Meteor has already APIs for all the logins, not just uh, username password login, but also for the logins like Twitter, Facebook and all. So it makes it much easier. So to use a login functionality, what you can do is that go to docs.media.com and uh, do something like media login. <laughs> so this is a, this is a, you need to make this like an API call, uh, which I will com come, back, come back to that later. Uh, so this is how you normally add logins. So after you add login, you get a variable known as meteor.user. Uh, I will again come back to that. So right now what you are doing is that we will be creating a Twitter login to our app. So how we can do is that, uh, go to developer.twitter.com or uh, dave.twitter.com and then you need to add a few packages. So you are adding meteor add accounts package. This is the core package by meteor. So we start that. Meteor add, I think it's accounts UI. Meteor add accounts Twitter. So we need to specify which package you are adding. So accounts is not a package, accounts password is a package. I hope accounts Twitter is a package, or we are checking if no, it's a package. Meteor add accounts Twitter. So add two packages, meter at accounts UI and meter at accounts Twitter. Okay. So if I like him pushing. See how to add the like just go to so manage your apps it's in the bottom and we create an app as key poster. So Please give it 127 column 2000. We'll come back and update the call value. Uh, Create application. So we we'll update it. Now if you come back, so we can add a login button over here, over, over this part. So we added an accounts UI package, so since we have added accounts UI package, what we can do is that, we can just go to the layout file and then add login buttons. So template which comes along with the accounts here, accounts here right? So let's come back. And after that, we we'll just edit the callback URL. 
Any troubles in understanding any of the answers? 